Poverty and the Arts. Thank you for joining us for the big payback during a time when our artists need your support more than ever, following the Middle Tennessee tornadoes and during the COVID-19 pandemic. While these virtual learning opportunities are free, please donate at thebigpayback.org slash POVA. All funds will further develop our art education program and support artists impacted by homelessness. Thank you in advance for donating in a big way to support our artists. Now please join us for our next art demo led by POVA program coordinator, Emily Wertheim. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm the program coordinator for Poverty and the Arts. I'm excited to teach you a brief modern calligraphy lesson today. I've been teaching calligraphy for several years and I'm excited to bring you this brief lesson with some tips and tricks to do it yourself at home. I also love painting and photography, especially when there's a way to combine all of these mediums together. Each of us has a unique handwriting style, just like our fingerprint, no two are alike. As we go along today, you don't have to match my style exactly. I want you to embrace and flourish your own unique style. Okay, remember, practice makes progress. I've been practicing calligraphy for many years now, starting with handwritten notes in middle school. It takes a lot of time, so please take it easy, go slow, and practice, practice, practice. Remember to breathe. If you're taking deep breaths while writing, your wrist is more likely to move freely across the paper. Today, we're going to be completing this easy project that makes a great decorative item for your home. With the skill set that we learned today, you'll easily be able to make your own home decor, flourish envelopes, make fun DIY and personalized cards to send to loved ones. And when you really start feeling confident, you can do longer quotes. One of the best parts about this project is you can probably complete it with items you already have around the house. Today I'm going to be using these Crayola Super Tips markers. They're one of my favorite lettering tools. You'll also need some paper for practicing and your final project. You'll need a bowl or something round to trace, and you'll need a pencil for some light sketching. If you're drawing this at home, you can use any marker, crayon, or pencil that you have lying around. If you're feeling adventurous, you can even try paints. The first skill that we're going to learn today is the downstroke. Go ahead and choose any color and marker that you'd like to start with. The great thing about these chisel tips is that you have a nice, broad side to do your downstroke. Don't worry about damaging the marker, it'll bounce right back even if you push down really hard. A downstroke is any time your marker is moving down the paper. I lean the marker to the side and create a thick marking down the paper. Let's practice several of these markings, maybe do 10 to 15 to get the hang of it. The next skill we're going to learn today is the upstroke. Feel free to use the same color you have been or change it up. An upstroke is any time our marker is moving up the paper. So we're gonna be moving in the opposite direction. For this skill, we're gonna use this great sharp point at the end of our marker. And we're just going to lightly graze across the paper, creating a really thin line. These thin lines require a steady hand and it takes a lot of practice. Again, let's practice these about 10 to 15 times so you can get the hang of it. Remember, this is just practice, so don't be too hard on yourself. Just like with any instrument, it requires a lot of warming up. For our next skill, we're going to combine our downstroke and our upstroke by creating some loops. As a reminder, when you move up the paper, you're going to use very, very light pressure. And then when you get to the top and transition to moving downward, we're going to apply very heavy pressure.
You can also practice the skill by doing a wavy line. You'll still use the same concepts and skills. So when you move up the paper, you will use very light pressure. And when you move down the paper, you will apply heavy pressure. One last shape that's helpful to practice with is a circular or an O shape. Again, we're using those same concepts and skills of heavy pressure as we move down the paper and light pressure as we move up the paper. While this may feel like silly scribbles on your paper, this will be the basis of all of the letters we're going to form soon. If your hand and wrist aren't quite connecting with the upstroke and downstroke movement with switching from heavy to light pressure, I have an easy fake it style to show you. This is often referred to as phallography because we're faking it. We're going to make it look like the real thing but I assure you, it all counts and still looks super cute. Without changing my pressure at all, I'm going to draw the letter A. As you can see, my pressure is consistent throughout the letter. Now, all I have to do is go back in, remember where my marker moved down the paper, which would be here and here, and reapply the pressure. Next, let's try the letter B. I'm going to draw the letter B with the same amount of pressure throughout the letter. This one is a little bit more tricky because there's several more lines, but let's go back in and find where our marker moved down the paper. And we're going to apply heavy pressure back into the letter. So we'll add it here. I'm going to show you a few examples of the letter G, but I encourage you to explore your own shapes and styles. Again, I'm using the fake it method. So I'm going to go back in and add pressure wherever my marker moved down the paper. Here. I'm going to show you how to do that same G in one fluid motion. Now let's take about one minute to practice some different letter shapes. Remember, the fun thing about modern calligraphy is that you're essentially creating your own font. Feel free to throw in some capital letters and lowercase letters. For many of you, it may have been some time since you've written in cursive, but feel free to use traditional cursive letters or more modern versions and have fun with it. You can use these same concepts and skills for capital letters. So I'm going to draw a capital G. A lot of students ask me what to do about lines that move straight across the paper. 
This is where your artistic freedom can come into play. You can choose to leave it as a thin line or a thick line, depending on what suits your style the best. Now using your pencil, we're going to start practicing the word that we want to use for our completed project. Today I'm going to be writing the word grow. So I'm going to begin by just practicing a few different styles to land upon the one that I'd like to use in the end. Now is the perfect chance to practice different letter shapes. In modern calligraphy, there really are no rules. You can make it up as you go. See how these two examples were all on one straight line? In this example, I use more of a bouncy style where my R and my O jump way above the line. This provides a more whimsical look to your writing. Now we're going to move on to completing our final project. For this step, you'll need your bowl and your pencil. First, we're going to make sure that our paper is the correct size for the frame that we want to use at the end. So make sure to cut it down to the right size. And it's important to add the word first before your leaves so you can make the leaves situate around your word. When you're happy with your pencil sketching and you want to move forward, next we're going to choose our marker color and begin to draw in the details. You can use the fake it method or transitioning from heavy to light pressure, whichever one works best for your hand. Next, we're going to add in our wreath. With your marker, carefully trace over the pencil line that we drew around the bowl or the plate. As you move around the wreath, you can add in small leaf details by just using two rounded lines to make the leaf. Before you put your completed piece in the frame, make sure to go back and erase any pencil lines as needed to make it look crisp and clean. Now your piece is frame ready and will make the perfect addition to any room in your home. Remember to make this your own. I encourage you to embrace your unique style. You can make your letters look different than mine. You can even add flowers to your wreath. Your style is beautiful and unique just how it is. Books and practice sheets are great for learning new styles and practicing different forms, but remember, the most beautiful style is yours when it's flourished. We'd love to see what you made today. You can tag us in your pictures online or send them to my email. It's emily at povertyandthearts.org. Thank you so much for watching. You can make your donation today at thebigpayback.org slash